Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee. Today I am going to show you how Kindle Create is now able to import your table of contents automatically from your interactive PDF that you generated from InDesign instead of having to manually assign table of contents pages. All right, so here we are on Kindle Create. To get started, let me show you the old way. We're gonna try and create new. We're gonna use a print replica. And this here is a new feature. The fact that you can manually enter the book title, the author name, and the publisher. This lady is self-publishing, so her own name is the publisher. All right, now we are going to choose our PDF. Take note, in this example here, I'm using a print PDF. Okay. Here is our file. In the past, what you've had to do is to select each page separately. Let's say this one. We would click to include it in the table of contents, and then we would label it title page, like this. Then we would continue to scroll. Then we would click this one. We would say, copyright page, and we would continue to do this throughout the whole book. Sometimes I would even cheat the system because I needed levels. Take, for example, this, part one, creating meaningful moments. So what I might do for this is I might do part one, then do this in all caps to make it stand out, and then every sub-level after this I would use a couple of space characters to make it look like it's indented a couple of levels over. So then I would take this entry and do one, two, three spaces, and continue like this. When we preview, we can see that a table of contents is starting to be generated from what I am selecting and putting into it. Fortunately, there is a way to automate this. This book is very long. It would take me an extremely long time to click through and add every single entry. I do not want to do that. So instead, we are going to utilize an interactive PDF to automatically import the table of contents that I already set up in InDesign. Why do the process twice? So let's go ahead and nix the current project. Okay, we're gonna head over to InDesign. This is my book document. What we're going to do is select each of these documents contained in the book, and we are going to export this book as a PDF. Now we are not going to export it as a print PDF. Instead, we are going to use an interactive PDF. This is the kicker right here. And I'm gonna rename this so I know what it is. There we go. Now we want this interactive PDF to export as pages. Um, the default view, that can stay. Default layout, that can stay. Um, yep. Let's do exporting. Here's what we need. We need the Acrobat layers, all of these things here at the bottom. I think the main thing we need is the tagged PDF checkbox. I just leave them all checked for the heck of it. Compression. Note that your Amazon users will indeed have to pay for the size of your file. So you don't want it to be massive like your full print file would be. We definitely want some compression to happen here. Um, I'm going to leave them at this setting. This should be enough to have a decent resolution, but have a much smaller file. And keep note, I could have, yes, indeed, made a um, fixed format EPUB. However, sometimes the formatting can get a little bit funny on those. And uh, this book has a lot of formatting that the author really wanted to keep and to make it look exactly like the print book, it's best to go with a KPF in her instance. Very good. Okay, here is our document. Now let's import this into Kindle Create. Oh, 
I do like that this new feature remains, it saves your previous uh, information. So you don't have to retype it every time while you're testing and formatting and reformatting. Here's our file, we're gonna open that. Now, before you touch anything, I find it's best to save first. I don't know why, but these files, if you touch everything and then try to save it, half the time it tells you the file's corrupted. So we're gonna save first. Save it here, that's fine. And before you touch anything again, don't add anything manually to the table of contents. All we need to do is go and check the previewer. There. See, now we have a multi-layered table of contents. It's already indented the way I want it to be. And everything is perfectly in order, just like it is in my InDesign document. Now the caveat here, you cannot add or remove anything from the table of contents. It is the way that it is. If I go and add, say, my copyright page or my title page manually to this table of contents, it will all disappear. If you want it to be automated, you have to set it right from InDesign the first time. Last thing I'm going to do for this document is I'm going to preserve the links in it. We are going to save it, and then we can go ahead and export it. That's it, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Hope it saves you some time. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Look at the graph, everybody. Look at how many of you are not subscribed. Come on, girls. Why are the men subscribing more than you? Let's catch up to them. All right, everybody. Hope you found this helpful. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.